could be argued that war produces medical innovation. After all, you need an up-to-date medical system to account for all of those casualties and horrific injuries. That is the legacy of the Civil War, the administration and management of medicine. It gave us emergency-based hospital care, triage, ambulances, nurses, and a sequenced hospital system for rehabilitative care. I'm Robert Hicks, director of the Mutter Museum and Historical Medical Library of the College of Physicians of Philadelphia. Thank you for joining us in this last episode to consider the medical legacy of the war in this series, Broken Bodies, Suffering Spirits, Injury, Death, and Healing in Civil War Philadelphia. After the war has begun to recede into the past, have to do with battlefield heroics. And there are certainly some of those, but most of it is a real dirty business. And what I did for a period of years was to deal with the after effects. And there were many other people that came to the hospitals, people who lived in Washington, who, whose names are not known. Uh, the women that made jam for me and that I would walk through the wards with a spoon and give a, a mouthful of jam to every one of the soldiers, that probably seems ridiculous. But to those soldiers, far from home, that was something that reminded them of home and mother. Civil War medicine by the end of the war had become uh, much more sophisticated. Uh, we had developed uh, a very uh, organized triage process for uh, making decisions about who should be treated uh, with first aid on the field of battle. Uh, we had a very organized ambulance corps that went onto the field, brought the wounded and the dying to uh, field hospitals at uh, very within very close range of, of the battle. Uh, for example, at, at Gettysburg, as the fighting began on the second day, I was within about 100 yards of uh, the skirmishing that was uh, occurring on a small hill at the southern end of the field that I subsequently learned uh, is known as Little Round Top. As the war is coming to an end, I've reflected on what we've learned from all of this carnage of, of these last four years. Um, there's been a terrible toll in lives. Uh, we've lost more than a half million men. However, nearly two-thirds of those losses were from non-combat injuries. We've had to develop a strategy for the management of combat injuries in the field and for the recuperation of, uh, of our wounded soldiers on a scale that we've never had to do before. And so there are many lessons that we need to take from this experience for future conflicts and for the, the uh, use of the public at large. Uh, this government has uh, invested heavily in the military, military medical structure and we need to learn from it. It's dedicated to the memory and the preservation of the history of, this, of the Civil War. And by doing so, we have in this building a tremendous amount of artifacts and ideas and papers from the Grand Army of the Republic. And what the GIR is, how it's called, what it really is, it was a, an organization of supportive to the soldiers after the Civil War, much like we've had the American Legion, veterans of foreign wars, except in one case, the GIR was only members of the Civil War, of the Civil War. And it's housed in here so many artifacts that came directly from those soldiers in their wills and what they left here, and what their families gave to this building. And it's made this place extremely rich in an idea of education and information in the artifacts and papers that we have here. The real motivation of the veterans to donate things here and give their papers and such is for the very reason why this museum stands. It is to preserve the heritage of the Civil War. And they thought it necessary and important for future generations to know what they did, to know what they lived through, and to know what they did for America. And I think that uh, we honor them 
And that's the real reason why we have such a, a vast number of volunteers here. To fear and grace my fear. The Civil War was a was a, a major change agent for women as nurses because they did show that cleanliness, good nutrition, care, consoling, all of these things made a difference. Cleanliness saved lives. Hospitals would not have been able to be established had there not been nurses to take care of the patients in the hospitals. And this is what's happening after the Civil War, so that it's women then who are going in and who are who were using their authority, that we're the ones who can be the best ones to be the nurses. We were always the nurses, let us in. There certainly are a couple of outstanding examples of how they influenced uh, medicine, even to this day. I think the first one would be, they developed the, the triage system of how is the surgeon going to decide what patient has to be treated first. And so there are the three categories. If they're too wounded and they're gonna die, they get comfort and that's it. If they're minimally involved and they can wait, then they get put over here. The ones who have a chance of being saved and who either are bleeding or who, have, who need to have wounds debrided right away, and, and that system is still used today on, on the battlefield. It's used in the emergency room too, because the doctor there, or nurses there, have to figure out what first things first. The other one is was invented really by a surgeon general. His name was Samuel Stout. He was uh, in charge of a very large number of hospitals in the South, and he invented the Mobile Army Hospital. And the reason is, is that as the North invaded the South, the Southern patients, the, the old ones that you had to carry, the ill ones, and then the new arrivals who were wounded, had to be constantly moved in great numbers further and further into the South with the North compressing them. And, the, and many of these, uh, he soon learned that, that tent hospitals were by far the most uh, sensible things. You could pack them up and you could use several of the tents in a row, tie them together and you could have one long thing. But he invented the idea that you have to know how to move a hospital with all the important uh, uh, attendant um, instruments and medications and, and beds and uh, latrines and the whole thing. And uh, that certainly uh, is a legacy. It wasn't in those days just surgical. It was medical too. The North showed us how to keep very thorough medical records. The medical and surgical uh, history of the War of the Rebellion is a 50 pound set of books. And it has three surgical volumes, three medical volumes. And these uh, began about uh, shortly after the end of the war and that went for another 15 years. And Congress paid to have it published. It was published by the, the press of the United States government. And the amazing amount of information, woodcuts, photographs, uh, micrographs, uh, but thousands of case histories. And this allows us to understand exactly what they did, what they thought they were doing. And um, it really is, it started our modern system of record keeping because the war uh, was so full of, of medical writings and publications. The need for an index first became obvious and that was the origin of the Index Medicus that grew out of the Civil War. Uh, and uh, uh, exists this day as PubMed, but for years, that, that, and before that, when there wasn't any widespread need to report or this many uh, soldiers, who needed an index? But that grew out of it too, and I think that has to be counted as a legacy. In considering the medical legacy of the war, it's appropriate that we end the series where we began, the Union League of Philadelphia. And just as the Union League began as a volunteer effort of civic-minded people, it continues to flourish today to promote the ideals and heritage of citizenship. So the next time you see an injured person taken by ambulance to emergency medical care, you are seeing Civil War medicine. It continues to happen before your very eyes. In this series, you have seen part of the collection of the Mutter Museum and our Historical Medical Library. Both of them are available for your use. Do come visit. 
and thank you again for watching the series.